Hello from the campus of Arcadia High School here in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's Friday Night Lights here on the Varsity Sports Show YouTube channel. I'm Peyton Gallagher with me tonight, Jack Pearson and Jack. Our matchup today features Desert Mountain, a team that's one and one, against Arcadia, the Titans, a team that's also one and one. Both teams heading into conference play here shortly and trying to figure out who they are in this 2021 season. Yeah, you said it right. Both teams one and one this season. This is kind of a benchmark game for both of these squads. Desert Mountain started off the season with a lopsided win against Gilbert. They won it 34 to seven. But then last Friday, at Chaparral at home, they lost 27 to nine. And for Desert Mountain, they played in two tight games, lost their first one, won their second. Both very low-scoring games. So we'll see how this one is today. For Arcadia, head coach Ray Brown in year one, trying to reset the culture of this Titan program. It's a defense-first football team this season. They've not allowed 20 points in a game yet so far this year, given only through two, but they've not allowed a point in the first half to this point in the season. So that is the task in front of a Desert Mountain team that likes to pound the football. Yeah, that's correct. And also for Arcadia, this is a team that likes to pass the ball quite a bit. It'll be interesting to see how they use the run game today. They got a really big offensive line. I'd like to see the way that they attack that today. Uh, but for for uh, the uh, for Caden Carr here, he's the middle linebacker star for Arcadia as well. I'd like to see him defensively, see what he can do. Well, there are some studs on the defensive side of the ball both ways as for the Wolves of Desert Mountain, it's Porter Sweet who's been holding the flag for them up front. Three sacks in game one, one sack in game two against Chaparral. What does Arcadia need to do to try and slow him down a little bit as they look to pass the ball early and often? Well, definitely maybe throw a double team on him. Definitely keeping him away from the quarterback. Protecting your quarterback at all costs today is the key. Also for Desert Mountain, Dylan Tapley had two interceptions in the win that they had earlier this year and he has three interceptions total this year, one of them being a pick six. He's definitely a guy to watch out for today. Well, the Titans will see Porter Sweet immediately as we are set to kick this one off under the lights and everybody on their feet. Yeah, great to see the fans here tonight. It's a beautiful night here in Phoenix, Arizona, Peyton. Cannot wait to get this one started. Foot meets football, and this one has commenced as Arcadia will run this out. It's a decent return, swerving back across the 30. It's Antonio Green, and that will be where this Arcadia offense sets up. And the question a little bit coming into this one was who would be under center? The answer to that is Rocco Mortensen, the 6'2 sophomore with football lineage to say the least. Yeah, last week Spencer who started for the first half but was replaced by Rocco, whose dad actually played at Arizona State University, located just 15 minutes away in Tempe. An offense that's trying to discover their own identity here in 2021 as they will start through the air. It's a quick fire out and it's picked off! Running it back inside the 10 and trotting into the end zone. It's Jacob Gimbel, he introduces himself to this game on the very first play as it takes less than 15 seconds to get the first first half score in Arcadia football game so far this year. It's Desert Mountain off to the races early. It was a, just a perfect start for Desert Mountain. All the momentum shifts right to them. And Rocco trying to put one in a tight window there, just not going to get past that defense. And the middle linebacker there takes that one to the house very, very easily. Tristan Bankul on for the extra point. It is up, it is good as it caroms in off the uprights. Well, there's a discussion being had about this. It looked pretty apparent from my vantage. <laughs> Very hesitant signal for a made PAT, but it is a dream start for the Wolves. Absolutely, and now the question is, how does Arcadia respond? Do they bring in their other quarterback after that throw? But I think the key is here is having a, a long methodical drive where you're back in control. Slow down the offense. It's still early. 
stay, stay cool, stay calm, stay composed is the key, I think, on this next drive here. So very quickly, just 11.44 to go, and we already have a 7-0 <laughs> score, Peyton. Yep. It goes without saying that there's plenty of game left in this one, but not the start Arcadia would have ever wanted. And that's Desert Mountain's third pick six of the year, so fantastic defense scoring the football. Takes a lot of pressure off your offense. Absolutely. A line drive kick is going to one hop and be fielded. And galloping through a hole and up across the 35. It's a return man of Arcadia. And back out on offense are the Titans. It is Rocco Mortensen who joins them in the huddle. He's allowed to continue here after an early mistake. Yeah, I think you have to let him continue. I mean, it's one throw. The game has just begun. He had a really good game last week, threw for over 200 yards and two touchdowns. Trying to shake one off. Desert Mountain threatens pressure. They bring extra bodies. They try to bottle up the run. Handoff to Ben Lengs. He's so gain on a handoff to Ben Lengths. We didn't really see them run the ball too often last week. I think that's definitely a point of emphasis that coach has to have. Second down snap coming from just inside the Arcadia 40. You may see them run the football a couple times here. They try to build confidence back up of their sophomore quarterback, Rocco Mortensen. Two backs in the backfield. Read option look, and it is going nowhere. Taken down in the backfield as Ryan Schnitzler got there first, and it's third and long. Just as you guessed it here up in the booth, I think the defense also guessed it, that they were running that football, knowing that the quarterback kind of is on his heels right now. The defense attacks that and reads it correctly. You gotta trust your quarterback here, right? Absolutely, you got a third and long here. This is where you gotta trust his arm. Maybe throw out to the sideline here on a third down. Rocco Mortensen is by himself in the backfield. Pressure coming. Mortensen in trouble, steps out of it originally. He gets popped down and throws it out of play. Nice job to stay on his feet and throw that one away. Avoids the sack, but the punt team will come out nonetheless for Arcadia. So a three and out, what a start for this defense here, Peyton, and Desert Mountain. The Wolves are playing with fire and passion. We'll see the football for the first time now. Jake Freeberg is the returner. Coming off a pretty big loss last week against Chaparral, the offense only putting up nine points. I'm sure Coach Hamilton would like to see this offense execute a little bit more clean this week. De La Cruz is the punter for the Titans. And there's a penalty flag down. Looks like a delay of game here against the offense. Delay of game. That is the call. You'll note that Jack Freeberg is not very far back here to field this punt, only about 20 yards or so down the field from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, pregame, I was watching the, this punter here and kind of seemed like his range was about 40 yards, so definitely think the return is in the right position here. Pretty decent boot. Freeberg comes up to field it. He'll take it. Penalty flag comes in as he bursts around the right side. Gets by De La Cruz. And is tackled down after a decent return. We'll wait on... The ruling here. Oh. 
It's a block in the back. The first drive of the night for the Wolves will start inside their own half. Yeah, so good field position potentially there and you know, a block in the back penalty, a little mental mistake, and now you're backed up on your own side of the 50. Drew Tapley is the quarterback as Desert Mountain sets up on offense from the 40 yard line. Immediately going to the ground and not getting much of anything. Good piece of tackling up front from the Titans defense. Tapley's a 6'3 junior. He has experience and he also has a great size for a quarterback, able to see over the defense. Let's see if that plays a role into tonight's game and see if he can get some throws off that you know a shorter quarterback maybe wouldn't be able to. This offense likes to get the back involved in more than one way as Max Sheffern will touch it through the air. Also obviously feature in the ground game. This time he'll take the handoff. A little bit more to work with. As I beg your pardon, that's actually Zach Kilberg. Zach Kilberg this season has been pretty solid. He's got 99 Zach yards Kilberg rushing this year and two touchdowns. They like to get him the ball quite a bit. This is more of a run attack offense. Third and medium on the first possession of the night for Desert Mountain. Yeah, definitely a manageable third down here. And for Arcadia, you know, this is a big possession here. Had a really, really slow start. You'd like your defense to get a three and out and get the football back in your offense's hands as quickly as possible. Wolves really trying to put a grip on this game. If they can create a long drive here and get some points after the early pick six. Arcadia trying to step in front and see to it that that does not happen. Quick delivery, had a man open. It was Kilberg on a wheel, but it falls incomplete and the punt unit will come off. Yeah, Tapley just underthrew him just a tad. Had to turn around and wasn't able to make the completion, but there was also some pressure there by Arcadia that forced him to throw it, I think, a little bit quicker than he wanted to there, Peyton. Yeah, brought the extra man off the edge and forced Tapley's hand. This is a spot here where a fake could be in play, so keep your eyes open, but punt unit is out for Desert Mountain. Yeah, with the lead, you know, a fake here could definitely be a possibility. Back to return, the Mystic number 36. Not on the roster, the coaches don't know who he is, but he will field this punt. Pretty good block out in front of him, as that will bring a penalty, maybe a little bit too good. Flags as flags are, are flying the early under the lights here in Scottsdale. Absolutely took him down. It was like a WWE move there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check what the call is here from the referees. You'd have to think it was something to do with that block. Most definitely. <laughs> this offense, it is against the Titans, so this offense will back up even further. So now poor starting field position for this team. So the punt does its job, it flips the field. The question is whether or not that was gonna be a personal foul or just a run the mill infraction for an illegal block. And it looks that it was the latter as the drive will start from the 21. So Rocco Mortensen still out there for the Titans here after two early blank drives. Remember, they started Spencer Hoos last week. So definitely maybe a two quarterback system trying to figure out who their guy is. Elbow motion into the slot, motion back out. Here's a rollout, shot down the field. It connects and a big chunk as Rocco Mortensen doesn't look too phased. He hooks up down the field with Jeremy Smith for 20 plus. Jeremy Smith ran a nice route, had a little post, and it was a great throw. How about that? Rocco Mortensen throwing across his body perfectly. What a ball placement that was by mm. Rocco. An excellent throw by the sophomore, and we're trying to compound that confidence game there. Most definitely. A long drive. That's a big throw there by Rocco. He's had two pretty, pretty poor possessions taking care of the football. They went three and out, threw a pick six on the first play of the game. That, that throw hopefully will settle him in. Five wide with the man who just caught that ball. Smith in the slot. Mortensen under duress, trying to roll out of trouble. He is hit hard and plowed down. 
arriving at the football there for this Desert Mountain team was Porter Sweet. And that will be ruled a sack, so that's five of them now for Sweet, a loss of two. And that's the second time this defense has gotten pressure and has forced, actually the third time, I'm sorry, that they've forced mm. the quarterback outside of the pocket, put him in tough positions. As you'll see, Sweet lining up on the right side, chased the quarterback all the way down. That extra effort is usually what sees to it that great pass rushers can succeed down in and down out. So this second and 12, back to throw again is Mortensen, again under trouble, this time checks it down. It's a decent catch and run to make something of nothing, as it's Ben Blanks who's able to salvage that play and make third down a little bit more manageable. It was a pretty nice play call. You saw Franks there, the linebacker on the left side going in for a blitz, and they set up a screen perfectly, but the defense able to keep everything in front of them and make the tackle in the open field. Pressure coming in waves, though, for Desert Mountain as this offensive line has struggled to protect Rocco Mortensen so far. Again, why not continue to go at them here on third down? Motioning from one side to the other is Alba. The far side of your screen now. Mortensen will throw for it. Four-man pressure. He will run. And he is hit hard. As a couple Wolves defenders combined for the tackle. And this is in no man's land with a decent spot. Only two yards to go here on fourth down. It looks like the offense will stay out there. Yeah, I think that's the correct decision. I think, you know, the fourth and two is very, very manageable. And you're down here trying to build some momentum. This, is, this shows that you have trust in your quarterback Absolutely. as well, which I love. About halfway played in the first quarter. The only points of pick six on the first offensive snap of the game. Now Rocco Mortensen will try to move the chains on fourth down. Yeah, it's definitely been a defensive battle so far, Peyton. Mortensen under trouble, gets it to Smith. And Smith watched it go in and out of his hands, wanted a call, did not get it, and it's a turnover on downs. Similar play that they completed earlier for the big game. They go right back to it. The quarterback, Rocco, throws it across his body. Not able to make the catch, though, is Smith, the wide receiver on the outside. So now a turnover on downs. First three possessions, pick six, three and out, and now a turnover on downs. Desert Mountain gets the ball back up 7-0 with all the momentum. Arcadia's defense has to bow up once more. First and 10 from the 48. Handoff into the middle of the pile is Kilberg. It's a decent gain on first down. Kevin Wigington, the first man in there for the Titans. Kind of an unusual spot this year for Acadia. Both of their games were scoreless at halftime. So first time they've seen points on the board before the second half. Of course, had to come back in the fourth to win their game last week. We'll have to Mount something of a comeback if they want to win here today, although it is early as Schifrin gets his first carry and doesn't get much. No, definitely not much there. And we have a flag after the play here, possibly a personal foul. Lots of penalties marring up this first quarter. And it looks like the referees are pointing towards the offense, and the offense is backing up. And that's exactly what it is. A sideline warning here. Mm. Kind of an unusual call. You don't see a sideline warning too often, Peyton. I think that might be in addition to whatever happened because usually that's not a flag on the first yeah. occurrence. So already pleasantries being exchanged between these two teams. <laughs> this brings nice. up a third and ten. So that is what the ruling was. Desert Mountain thought there was a penalty on them, backed up, but it was just a sideline warning. So they will snap the ball from the original point of the snap, although the dial it down still reads second down. The scoreboard says third and seven. So I guess we'll wait and see as Tapley takes the snap and there's another flag. Well, this is fun. 
still early in the season, you know, offenses still might not be exactly on cue on every single snap here, and you're seeing that here early. So the referee unsure of where to spot the ball. Now he walks it back after what is called a five-yard penalty, some sort of infraction prior to the play. And third and seven becomes third and 12, or maybe second and 12. Okay, the dial of down has changed. <laughs> it's third down. Yeah, had a little bit of confusion here. And we finally got it straightened out. Tapley is by himself in the gun. The look out on a screen. Fine, Kilberg cuts it back inside, fights forward, and still stays on his feet to the very last. Ball pops out, but after the whistle, it will be fourth and medium. Punt team coming on. They're going to choose to try and pin this Titan offense back in their own half. I definitely like that play rather than going for it here. Your defense has done its job so far. Why not make it even tougher on the offense instead of giving them good field position? You got the lead. You got something to protect as well. So 340 to go. Still 7-0 here off the pick six by Desert Mountain. Pretty decent punt from Banquel as the fair catch is waved inside the 10. Be, it will be 90 yards to go for this offense when they head back out on the field here. Reminder, the varsity sports show Nothing really going on the ground game, just like the first two weeks for the Titans here. And I'd like to see them run behind those big tackles that they got. Their captain, number 77, James Phillips. 6'5", 290 as listed. Maybe a little bit of a fabrication there, I don't know. But certainly brings the intimidation factor when you see numbers like that. And he is a big old boy. Oh yeah, he's big. Running out and in trouble. Has to get out of his own end zone. Inexplicably throws the ball to the ground. It's ruled incomplete. But Rocco Mortensen again under fire in the pocket. Yeah, Mortensen, it, he's, definitely getting, he's definitely getting pressured. But also, I got to give credit to the secondary of Desert Mountain. They have done a fantastic job not allowing any of these receivers to have an inch of room. Nowhere to go for Rocco there. Time out on the field. And we will take it with them. Get a word from our sponsors here on the Varsity Sports Show YouTube channel. It's seven to nothing off a pick six on the very first offensive snap as Desert Mountain has the lead. We'll be back in a moment. How am I doing? I had a couple like 24th Street Dental Biltmore is the place to go for cosmetic dentistry and Invisalign. Doctors Braden, Turner, and the team are ready to put your dental needs first. They are the Valley's Invisalign experts. Schedule a free exam today and mention the Varsity Show for complimentary in house whitening. From cleanings to more comprehensive dental, 24th Street Dental Biltmore in Phoenix is the first step toward a healthier smile. Located in the heart of the Biltmore, call or stop by 602 468 1135. Proud partners of the the Varsity Sports Show. Second down, and the question has become for the Titans, can they protect Rocco Mortens in their sophomore quarterback? They'll choose to run here. And meeting a wall is that ground attempt. It's going to be a big old loss. Three yards in the wrong direction, and it's third and long again, pinned into your own 10 against a pass rush that's gotten home without really having to try that hard. Man, those linebackers just filling those gaps to perfection, allowing no space for the running back to run through, no gaps. Porter Sweet out there on the near side at defensive end, already with five sacks on the year, already with a sack to his name in this game. Have to imagine he'll be paid a lot of attention on this third and long. Press coverage on either side. And, and another timeout on the field. Timeout, Arcadia. It'll be Arcadia who takes it, and since we just went to a break, we'll stay here. Jack, what have you seen from the line play so far of Arcadia, and what can they maybe do to tighten it up? Well, right now we've seen Desert Mountain just 
absolutely go have anything they want. They've just gone right through that offensive line. They're getting pressure on Rocco. Running backs have had no gaps to run through. Right now, Desert Mountain has dominated this game defensively in every fashion. Offensively, though, Desert Mountain hasn't done too much. It's definitely been a defensive battle so far. And that's the only points we've seen was a pick six on the first snap of the game, first offensive play for Arcadia. So I think I'd like to see Arcadia kind of maybe double team, maybe send an extra tight end in there to protect their quarterback. Also, maybe some screen passes, too, could be a great idea with those linebackers firing in towards those gaps. Well, this offense has looked the best so far. It's been looking for Jeremy Smith, who's in the slot right now. Marco Mortensen will try to dial it in right now. Fires to Smith, and it deflects off his hands. He's fortunate that wasn't picked off, and it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, Smith's gotten open a few times tonight. He's found some gaps in the defense. Has two drops, however, tonight. And that was one of them you just saw there that you said luckily wasn't picked, and you're, exa you're exactly right there. That ball tipped up in the air and hung in the air for quite a bit of time. And now Jack Freeberg back to return for Desert Mountain, likely to have him in good field position Shadow on Arcadia's side of the 50. Own goal post as Freeberg watch this one spiral into his midriff. Beats one man. Stops, starts, and bursts to the edge inside the 30. Gets a block, cuts back inside before being herded out and tackled. No flags, and there was a nice little return by Freeberg. I love the patience he has. Keeps his eyes down the field, kind of stutter steps a little bit. He gets the most out of that run using his speed to the outside. This drive will start from just outside the red zone. How much the Arcadia offense has struggled so far. Have to think that this is a big spot for the defensive unit, the team in red, to try and prevent points from being scored. Absolutely. Looking to throw. Tapley. Dropped the football. Picks it up. And a wild play, nets two yards. High school football, folks. Absolutely, a very weird play. You didn't see really anybody on Arcadia make a blitz for that football, which was really surprising. There's another flag down. That's gonna be a hold against Desert Mountain. And that definitely puts him out of field goal range. Another penalty marker. They marked off well more than five yards there, or 10 yards, I should say. Yeah. Looks like a loss of 16 on that penalty. At the bottom of your screen here is Dylan Tapley. Big hole. Getting all the yards lost and down after a gain of 15 is Zach Kilberg. Best run and offensive play of the game so far for Desert Mountain. Yeah, gets them right back to where they were before the penalty there. So a nice first down play and it brings up second and pretty manageable. Nice gain of eight yards there. Shift up front for Desert Mountain. All kinds of commotion as quite literally one step forward and then two steps back. The second penalty of this possession will back Desert Mountain up another five. Flags are flying. Another one. Another one. Second and 17. Favorite DJ Khaled song. Go. <laughs> oh. Put me on the spot, Peyton. Put me on the spot. Uh. All the chart toppers. Man. We'll let you answer after the play. Yeah. Clock runs. It's a big decision. Big it decision. Is, it <laughs> is. As this play call is here on second and long. Approaching the one minute mark here in the first quarter. Tapley on a quick throw. Got Sheffrin. Burst back inside. That's Offense starting to click, at least on the snaps that are allowed to stand. As it's back to back chunks. 
for Desert Mountain. Maybe a couple snaps left before the end of the quarter. I like that play call there, getting getting the ball out of Tapley's hands into one of your playmakers' hands. That's Sheffrin there. He gets out in space, makes a couple men miss, picks up a good chunk of yardage. Desert Mountain has gained 22 yards so far in the plays they've run on this possession. They've yet to pick up a first down. They've got a chance here, though, on third and long. Tapley looks over the middle, gets his man, a stiff arm, out around the right edge and pounded out of play as Ryan Schnitzler with a catch and run has a first down and into the red zone plunge the Wolves offense. And a message sent by Carter Pruitt at the end of that play making, making him get out of bounds maybe next time he sees him, Carter Pruitt laying the hammer down. This is a very proud defense that will look to bow up inside their own 15. Eight seconds left on the game clock here in the first. We'll see if they get another snap away. I believe this is the first time either team has been in the red zone tonight. QB run for a new quarterback who looks for the end zone. It's close. He's going to be just shy as on the QB keeper was Brady McDonough. And there'll be a yard out, Desert Mountain will. When we start the second quarter here from Arcadia High in Scottsdale. Back in a few, folks. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Creating a platform to promote young people in extracurricular activities and community outreach. If you are interested in partnering up with the Varsity Sports Show, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or call or text us at 480-779-9437. The Varsity Sports Show. That ball is a fumble. You took it, you tucked it away, and you ran. Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you. Hey guys, Vince here to talk to you about a good friend of mine named Bob Jenkins. Bob is a Marine Corps veteran. Bob and his younger brother DJ own Vets Built Contracting. For five years, they've been hiring and putting veterans to work. Vets Built is licensed, bonded, and insured, both residential and commercial, specializing in renovations, remodeling, new build, casitas, safe rooms, or small commercial TI work. If you're a skilled veteran looking for work, a homeowner in need of work, or a commercial business needing TI work, please call Bob or DJ at Vets Built at 480-584-3675. We rejoin you here from Arcadia High. It is Desert Mountain who has the lead on the road and looking to add to it as they'll take the first snap of the second quarter from the one yard line. Remaining in the game, quarterback Brady McDonough who took his first snap up the gut for a 10 yard quarterback keeper to end the first frame. He looked good on that first run, and I, I think I look for them to go right back to that same play call here. We'll note the Arcadia band, three-time back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back state champs, which is a very proud distinction here in this state. And they Nation's are 48th, making a lot of noise right on this side of the field, oh right yeah. to the right They're of Desert tonight. Mountain. They're bumping tonight. Single back QB keeper, trying to force him in there. Doesn't look he like he got it here. Stuffed a yard short, yeah. So third and goal from inside the two. This is a ginormous play. Hold him to three here. That is a big win by the defense. Alex Nabavi comes in to add some extra muscle. As McDonough looks a short yardage option. And the bench here for Arcadia trying to get this crowd hyped up, and they are on this big third down and one from the one yard line. Maybe two downs to play with, but Arcadia just trying to get one more stop. And in motion, Kilberg bobbled, snap, but it does not matter as that will be six points for the Wolves. Kilberg plunges in, and it is 13 to nothing. Kilberg picks up his third rushing touchdown this season. Wasn't even touched as he got into the end zone there. Just gallops for six. Even with the miscommunication between the quarterback and the running back on the exchange, it didn't really matter much as Kilberg, as you said, went in unscathed. Bankwell on for the PAT. The 
This one squeaks wide left. So almost a goal line stand by Arcadia, but instead seven points will be scored. It'll be 14-0 here. And Arcadia will get the ball back with an offense that has not been too productive tonight here, Peyton. It's worthy of noting, though, Jack, that this Arcadia team last week was down 12 to nothing. Because of a missed extra point, they were able to come back and eventually win that one 15 to 12 against Saguaro. It was a big win, and they've played in two really close games. So you got to believe they have experience in being down and also playing in close games, which is something that Desert Mountain does not have. They were blown out True. by Chaparral, and they beat Gilbert 34 to 7. All right, time to get those feet rolling. Well, if Arcadia wants to avoid the faint that Gilbert faced in week one against this Desert Mountain team, they've got to find some offense, and they better do it fast. The Arcadia crowd starting to get loud, trying to energize this team, and it's great to see fans back here, Peyton, after COVID. Great absolutely. to see the student section absolutely at full capacity. Bobby boots it, caught inside the five, off and running. Decent little return back out to the 24. Chris who's on the return. Rocco Jack Mortensen the gets the marching orders from the sideline. His coaching staff has four ex-NFL minds perusing the sideline in blue tonight. I'll have to dial something up. An offense that has been stymied, to say the least, aside from one decent play. Yeah, that's absolutely correct there. The offensive line coach for the Cardinals is actually the head coach tonight for the Titans. They've done an okay job, pretty subpar job, I should say, of protecting their quarterback tonight, however. First and 10. Decent pocket this time for Mortensen, but he fires over the middle, and it's picked off again. That's Gimbal's second, I believe. It absolutely is, and a takeaway turns the tides even more so in favor of the road team as it will be quick and easy. Starting field position from inside the 30 on the heels of one score already for Desert Mountain. And let me tell you what, did that play not look very similar to the first play of the game we had earlier that went for six? You know, you see the quarterback try to put one there in a tight window and it's bobbled around, and again, the second interception tonight for Gimble. Question now becomes, do you take a shot after the sudden change? Appears the quarterback is Tapley once more. He will throw quickly, find his tight end in the flat, who will take it and run down the sideline, reach the 15. That is a decent yeah, Dylan play Hipp. by Dylan Hip. Dylan Hip, 6'5", 215. They used him well there, and he showed a little bit of speed there to the outside. So now, back in the red zone where they just were a few moments ago, where they scored six here. And this Arcadia defense have been, has been on the field quite a bit. They definitely have to be fatigued right now. Schifrin up the gut. For another chunk, and plays that were one and two yards in the first quarter are turning into six and seven. Schifrin's had some nice couple of runs tonight as he is heading towards the sideline after a nice gain. Defense of Arcadia, the Titans back against the wall once again. This is a short second down here, second down and two. They went to McDonough at quarterback here inside the red zone on the last possession, but Tapley allowed to stay in this time. Here is Kilberg, scored a moment ago. He won't on this snap, but he will take a couple tacklers with him inside the five. And it picks up a first down, I believe here. Yes, it will, so it'll be first and goal now. They'll have three shots to put six points on the board once again. Tapley still running here at the QB position. Some extra size on as Colton Muntz comes into the game. It's a lot of big bodies on the right side of that line. 
Dalton Hill, Hip, Dylan Hip out there with him. They'll run that way. Kilberg lowers the shoulder. And it stopped just shy. Zach Kilberg on the run. Cabot will be Wigginton. And Kari Beeler on the side. Yeah, it looked like they were running to the right side the whole time. You said it. They stacked that right side with the tight end, Dylan Hip there and company. And they went right to that right side as you predicted, but a nice stop made by Kerry Beeler. McDonough comes back in. Flanked on his left hip by Kilberg. Read option. Right down the middle. And awaiting the signal. Touchdown, Desert Mountain. They cash in on the turnover. A penalty flag comes in late after the play as McDonough bursts in from a yard out. See what the flag is, but that's the third time he's just taken the snap and ran it right at the middle. And he looks real explosive when he does it, Peyton. And that one gets him a six points here, unless this penalty over overrides that, which I don't believe it will. I think this is after the play. A QB wrap action where quarterback feigns the handoff and then follows his running back through the hole. And it's another sideline warning issued. So that's their second. This one might be enforced on the kickoff. As this one is a little bit better than the last from Bankwell. Splits the uprights and it's 20 to nothing. So dire eight. straits right now for Arcadia. So 8.15 to go. You said it right, dire straits. Arcadia with their backs against the wall. It's been all Desert Mountain here. I think points on the board is what Arcadia is thinking about. They have to get some sort of momentum going into the halftime locker room in order to make a comeback. This one threatening to, to get out of hand. Rocco Mortensen has his helmet on. Looks that he's going to go back out there after tossing his second pick of the game. He's had a couple bad throws, but he's also had a couple really, really good throws down the field where you can see the potential. He's got great arm strength. We saw him throw across his body, which is a very difficult throw as a quarterback, and we saw him do it very accurately as well. He's looked at his best when he's been on the move. His pocket has shifted left to right with a couple boots, but has struggled from inside the tackles. Definitely looks more comfortable rolling outside of the pocket. You said it right there. We'll see if the number one band can give their team some juice here. <laughs> well, with the penalty yardage added, maybe a chance to return this. In trouble. Going down a yard shy of where the last kickoff was returned to. Unable to do anything with the penalty yardage there. On the kick is Arcadia, and just nothing's going their way right now. You hate to be so negative, but that has been the scene of this game. Yeah, you said it right. You're absolutely correct. Nothing going their way. So what do you do? You go back to basics. You go back to where you're comfortable, and whether that be short throws. I'd like to see a long methodical drive, Peyton, here, where they stay in control, they stay calm, and they do what they want to do. Right now it looks like Desert Mountains had them on their heels all game. I think we might just see whatever Arcadia's best play is right here. Yeah, maybe taking a shot as well. Said it's a read option. And it is a bad result as that's another big loss. Forward progress makes it only forfeit of three yards on the rushing attempt, but it's just not coming on the ground. No one really picked up Zach Kilberg there. He plays running back as well as strong safety. No one even touched him and he makes the big play a tackle for loss. Arcadia, they've got one-on-one -on -one matchups outside, but at the moment can't block for long enough to really make the Wolves pay for it with a couple shots down the field. Yeah, we've seen Jeremy Smith beat some of these corners here, but like you said, just not enough time. More pressure coming, and there's a flag. And I think this pressure is also causing some of these offensive linemen to jump early, get a head start to try and protect their quarterback most definitely. A time they brought five oh, or six. And this one's actually an approachment. So this one will go 
the positive direction for Arcadia. Very helpful after the loss on first down. Second and 13 turns into second and eight. So as the clock approaches seven minutes here, Arcadia with the ball down 20 to zero in front of their home crowd. High snap, Mortensen corrals it. Under pressure, got away from one. But he is thrown down in the backfield and sacked. Another big loss as the first guy in there was Nabavi and it was cleaned up by Colin Franks. Yeah, high snap and defense gets tons of pressure. A combination that's a nightmare for quarterback Rocco Mortensen. And now Third and long, what do you do here? Do you just fall on the sword with a draw or a screen, or do you actually go for it down 20 to nothing? I think here's where you set up a screen, and I'm surprised they haven't done that, you know, even on second down or first down. They're blitzing on almost every player, and you'll see them drop back, actually, this time, the linebackers. Ooh, only three in the rush this time, but nearly intercepted again is that's a big hit. It will be fourth down. Here comes another punt. It was timed perfectly, too. Right when the ball got there, he was blown up, had no chance to catch that ball. And the punt team comes back out for Arcadia, Desert Mountain. They can put more points on the board. Man, this one might just be getting real close to being out of hand. Another three and out for the Titans. As Jack Freeberg will set up from inside his own half to field this punt. Feels on the goal line as De La Cruz sends it skyward. Freeberg will take it and run and find a seam. Back up the middle, there goes Freeberg as he's spun forward and taken down at the 25. Great blocking by that receiving team there. And they didn't get penalized as well, so now they'll have it here at the 25. Another great field position start for you this said offense. It. You said this defense that has been so good this year hasn't had much of a chance. They've started the last three drives from inside their own 30. And the offense Three and out, three and out, three and out. The defense on the field most of the night. Mm -hmm. Time of possession absolutely dominated by Desert Mountain. Back into the game at quarterback will be Tapley. Lone running back behind him as tight end motions over to the right side. A run at the opposite direction. Kilberg, still Kilberg as he drives his legs down to the 11. Some nifty moves by Kilberg. Two jukes. A couple ankle breakers there. I'll tell you what, Jack, it must be a good feeling to be on the offensive line right now for the Desert Mountain Wolves as they've been able to lean on this front of the Titans all night long and are starting to really open up some big holes. Definitely some big holes being made here, and Kilberg is feasting off of it. This is a really good running back that stays patient when he runs. I, I've definitely noticed that tonight. He's always looking for the next blocker and looking to get as many yards as possible. And we'll here he goes again. Look for the end zone here, and he is popped down at the five. And why not continue to go to him here? You've had so much success running the ball up the middle or even going to their other quarterback, McDonough, who's taking a few quarterback draws here down in the red zone. Such a weapon. You gain that extra blocker as well as Arcadia sideline turns to their students to try and drum up some noise. They're not getting much help. <laughs> it is an awe-stricken and quiet Arcadia crowd as we are under the five-minute mark yeah, here I would say, in the first half. I would say they look stunned here, the fans around me. They'll pull it out, throw it to the pylon, going for the corner. He's got it, touchdown, Desert Mountain. That's Colin Franks, who also plays on both sides of the ball. He's a senior, 6'1", 165, plays tight end, as well as outside linebacker. He catches it on the sideline, uses that right shoulder, gets low, and dives for the pylon for another six. They are pouring it on here, Peyton, on the road, and what a message it is sending. 
and coming off a loss against Chaparral last week. I mean, this is just ideal for this football team. Up and good. That's seven more. It's 27 to nothing. Short fields and quick scores for the Wolves as we will step aside, be back with the rest of the first half when we return. Hey guys, Vince here to talk to you about a good friend of mine named Bob Jenkins. Bob is a Marine Corps veteran. Bob and his younger brother DJ own Vets Built Contracting. For five years, they've been hiring and putting veterans to work. Vets Built is licensed, bonded, and insured, both residential and commercial, specializing in renovations, remodeling, new build, casitas, safe rooms, or small commercial TI work. If you're a skilled veteran looking for work, a homeowner in need of work, or a commercial business needing TI work, please call Bob or DJ at Vets Built at 480-584-3675. First half for the Wolves of Desert Mountain that sees them off a just a score, Jack, from their season high to this point in the first half. They are up 27 to nothing on the Titans of Arcadia. So offense has come undone and the defense has worn thin after a decent start to this game. So they've been hemmed into their own half for what feels like the duration of this one. Job for the offense as they take the ball back after a touchback. Be just to get a couple first downs. Nice line drive kick there. It'll be a touchback here. And after contemplation, I believe I finally got my pick for my favorite DJ Khaled song. I think Took it's gotta be enough. Yeah, it's gotta be Popstar, I believe. With Drake, you know, one of the best out there. I mean, it took you this long. You care to show your work? Explain. Give me a little essay. Well. Drake's one of my favorite rappers, you know, and anytime he's in a song, I got to give it a listen. And I, the production of it's fantastic. The production here has been fantastic as well on the Varsity Sports Show. Thank you all for tuning in so far tonight. We've had a fun one in store for, for you. Tell you the Desert Mountain fans are certifiably loving this as here is that screen you've been calling for. It hits the ground first as looking to quickly flare it out there to the receiver. Ready forced was Rocco Mortensen. Ball's incomplete though, and there was a flag out there. Yeah, it looked like the referee put it right back in his pocket, however. I beg your pardon, there's been a change at quarterback as Spencer Hoos has re-entered the game to try and spark something. Threw a couple picks after being named the starter to begin the season, was benched for the sophomore Mortensen, but back out there now. Yeah, so it's the opposite of what happened last game. Spencer started last game and was replaced this week. He is the, he is the uh, replacement. He's got a deep hole to dig out of, but plenty of time to do it as Hoos rolls out, gets crushed, and Smith nearly cut in front and caught that football, but it bounces off his breastplate and incomplete. Smith does a good job of turning around and tracking that ball. If he keeps running, that's definitely another interception, and now they're now the Desert Mountain team's threatening once again to put a few more points on that scoreboard before halftime, and that's the last thing that you want if you're Arcadia. I think you want to go into this half with some sort of momentum, and this drive has got to be so crucial right now. Who's got popped there? Showed a little guts as he delivered that ball down the field. Third and long. And it looks like these linebackers are going to fire again. Yes, they do. Man open downfield, it's cut! Out across the 50 as Forst catches the long ball. It's a beautiful throw from Hoos. Brady Forst, we haven't called his name that often tonight, but last week, how about the big game? He had 114 yards receiving, two touchdowns. He went for a 68-yarder last week as well. We finally saw him with a breakout play, and it was a perfectly placed ball as well, right over the shoulder to the corner and first really good offensive play in the second quarter. They're gonna bring this back, say he stepped out, but more than enough for the first down. First one in a long time as Hoos has to collect a high snap, will look long again. And it's just out of the reach of what would have been an interception as the kicker turned corner, Tristan Bankwell was in the area. Definitely a risky throw, it was double coverage over there. The safety went to help and was there on time. Luckily, overthrew both his, his receiver as well as the two, as the two defenders in the secondary. Who's back to the huddle, and is this the formula now? Is it just take shots and see what happens? Well, at this point, what do you, what do you got to lose? You know, there's, there's only 3.58 to go. 
you got to get something going. And, you know, they had a nice little pass there. Why not go back at it again? But definitely don't want to throw in a double coverage again. Running back on the left side of Hoos this time. Threatening pressure and bringing it is Desert Mountain. It was picked up for a moment and just trying to dip it out of pressure. It's incomplete as Hoos kind of underhand tossed it to his yes. running back there. We'll bring up a third and ten. That was Ben Blanks, but it's going to be third and ten despite the heroics. Yeah, the pressure getting there. Once again, I keep saying that. I think that's a responsibility, though, that Ben Blanks, he's got to pick that guy up. He was a little late to pick up that block, and he gets around him. Luckily, that one didn't end up with a sack, and now you have a third and ten here. Dylan Tapley screaming around the edge from a safety spot. See if they bring pressure again. Who's by his lonesome? Linebackers cheating up. They bring him. Who's an immediate pressure? Gets it away, and it's incomplete. Fourth and ten for the Titans. Fourth and ten. But at least you got a first down, gave your defense some time to collect themselves, and you're going to be able to punt this to the other side of the field. Yeah, you're going to be able to flip the field. Now the key is just not allowing Desert Mountain to get any more points on the board. Well, you tell your team at halftime, hey, they scored 27 and a half, so can we. But if it gets past 30, if they get points on this drive, it starts to feel a very tall task in half number two. For this Arcadia team. Starts to be almost unreachable. And I'll tell you what, it cannot be fun to be a quarterback in this offense tonight for Arcadia, getting hit on almost every single play. These linebackers must be having the time of their life feasting. And three free shot after free shot as with the ball at the 30-yard line after the punt went out of bounds, we'll get a word from our sponsors, and we'd like to give a big shout-out to our Own the Field sponsor, Zips Sports Grill and Goldie's Sports Cafe. Zips is the Valley's neighborhood sports grill with 14 locations across the Valley. I know, Jack, you're a fan. Big fan of Zips. Love the place. Lots of TVs to watch the big games on Saturdays and Sundays. Offense back out here. And their wings are pretty good, too. Like the, uh, the buffalo sauce that they got there. Barbecue's not too half bad. See if this Desert Mountain offensive line has earned a free trip. Maybe paid for by some of the skill players as this ball is lofted up to no one in particular. Dangerous throw from an offense that's really feeling itself now as it falls incomplete. Couple guys were in the neighborhood. And Ryan Schnitzier almost made a one-handed OBJ type of catch there. Got to applaud the ambition. Yeah, would have been on my Sports Center top 10 if he pulled that one in. Jack, what does your Sports Center look like? Well, it's, it's whatever I watch. You know, I can't have <laughs> I can't have I can't have a top 10 with plays I don't watch. So, don't see too many one-handed offensive Fair catches point. there. Yeah, can't have top plays I didn't watch. Says Jack Pearson. <laughs> Here's the snap. Another big gaping hole, about eight axe handles wide as they do a good job of getting to the football at the second level. Getting the running back, Max Sheffrin, down. Scary. Clock running under three minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, scary thing is, still three timeouts for Tezer Mountain. They can True. stop the clock. And the way they're moving the football, they're threatening to score once again. Tezer Mountain, they get a first down here on third and short, and time management game begins. Third and two. As the running option is back at quarterback. It's McDonough, who's by himself. Always a threat to run, but we'll see if they decide to throw. Sheffrin joins him in the backfield now. Their QB keeper, he's going to have more than enough. And here goes McDonough, shoestring tackle. Stops a big gain, but it is a first down as the chains move. And here is what looks like no timeout. The clock is stopped as the chains move. And now the offense rallies around. Gosh, McDonough has just out. looked so explosive on that same exact play, and they just can't seem to stop it. Well, he stays out there. It's interesting. He's not been the throwing option with time ticking down. See if they try to ignite the pass game with number 12. Couple men in motion here. That draws a flag. Yeah, and you see number four there for Desert Mountain. That's Jack Freeberg, a little frustrated with Ryan Schnitzier as they both go in motion. 
Clock stops at two minutes and 22 seconds. That should be five yards in the wrong direction for a false start. So they move from the 49 to the 44 of their own half of the field. Restarting the clock, Tapley in at quarterback now. First and 15, all three timeouts still in the satchel bag with its coaching staff. Tafley will take the quick throw. Sliding by one tackle and bursting into the open field as he is pounded down. Nice play by Jack Freeberg as he burst forward. And the clock continues to run. Just the tackling there has been a problem too as well. You see Tommy Ledyard just kind of miss a tackle there. And those are, you know, plays that are going to win you games. You, you got to make those those tackles in the open field. And it looks like Arcadia is struggling to get some men off the field here. Well, tired legs on a defense that has been out there for the lion's share of this first half. Tapley looking to throw it quickly out. Finds his receiver. Takes a big hit and gets the first down. The chains move again. 1.22 to go. Are they going to use a timeout here? The clock will momentarily stop. That completion, completion Tapley to Tapley. As Dylan Tapley caught that ball and fell forward. As you said, the clock rolls now with the spotting of the football. Running back is Sheffrin. Freeberg in motion. Tapley. We'll look to the sideline. Almost a miraculous catch trying to tightrope on the far sideline was Dr Dylan Tapley once more. Couldn't hang on and he'll catch his breath on the sideline now. May have fell on the football there. That doesn't feel good. Now couldn't knock the wind under him and that he had to use all of his 6'4 frame there to reach out and try to get that one. Respect the effort. Clock halts at a minute and three seconds after the incompletion. Still all three timeouts for the visiting team. This is a run play. As slowed down and stopped on the run is Sheffrin. And this will be the first timeout called. One Coming thing, up third and five. One thing I've noticed about Sheffrin tonight is he's fell forward on every single one of his runs. He, he runs mean. He keeps his head down. You see it there. He, he falls forward, and that's the key on gaining yardage. And he picks up a nice gain of five here, and it brings up a manageable third and five. We'll stay here through the timeout under a minute. How aggressive are you if you're Desert Mountain Jack? I mean, why not be aggressive? You, you got nothing to lose. Basically, you're up 27-0. The offense on the other side hasn't produced much at all. Why not take a couple shots to the end zone instead of just running the, running the ball? But... I think for Arcadia, why not send a blitz as well? Try to get a sack or force the quarterback into a bad decision. We haven't seen those linebackers on a blitz very much tonight. Arcadia just trying to make something happen and gain some momentum into the intermission. Desert Mountain maybe trying to throw a death blow ahead of halftime. Rolling out right, it's Tapley. He'll take the quick throw, and it bounces off the shoulder pad of his target. That was Colin Franks, who caught the touchdown moments ago. It'll be fourth and medium, and really no reason not to go for this. Yeah, why not, right? Fourth and medium, you're kind of in no man's land. If you punt it, could easily be in a similar position with a uh, touchback here. So, Quite honestly, Jack, the way this Arcadia offense has moved, you're more likely to surrender points on a block punt or punt return. That's exactly right. Fourth and five, Arcadia looking to get a much needed stop. Tapley quickly fires, great adjustment to the football and Freeberg reels it in to move the chains and stop the clock. It was a low back shoulder throw. Like you said, great adjustment by Freeberg there. They pick up the first down, and it looks like Arcadia will not have their offense out until the second half of this football game. 
No timeout clock running under 40 seconds. Tapley scanning, firing. Another great catch as this time it's Dylan Tapley with his second grab of the possession short of the marker, 24 seconds. And the timeout does come, stopping the clock at 23, but the receiver's starting to ball out now. That was a fantastic catch. I mean, that was contested. That, that corner was all over him. Shows his strong hands. He plays offense and defense. He actually had two interceptions for this football team and a pick six in the first game of the season. Tapley, that is. So 23 seconds to go. They got one timeout remaining. We still haven't seen him take a shot to the end zone, which is something I said that we might see them do. Yeah, nothing really vertical out of this Desert Mountain offense. More than happy to play the intermediate passing game and pound the rock. Yeah, when you got a lead, it's crucial to have a good running game, and that's exactly what this team has. They got a couple great running backs we've seen tonight already. Kilberg play very, very well, and also Sheffrin. Kilberg is the back here. Second and short, usually an opportunity to take a look down the field. Only about 18 yards of field to look to as Tapley goes for it all. Man is wide open. Touchdown. You guess who? It's Dylan Tapley again. And it is all Desert Mountain. Fireworks at the end of the first half. What a route there by Tapley. He fakes the inside post and goes right to the corner, beats his man, and it was a perfectly thrown ball by Drew Tapley for another six, 17 seconds to go. And I stand corrected, this Arcadia offense will get the ball back. <laughs> <laughs> Kick is up. It is good from Banquel. 34 to nothing as resounding a statement after a loss as you could get from Desert Mountain. We will step aside for a brief moment and run some of the local ads. Get some free play before halftime, why not? Are you unable to do the things you love? Do you know your daily habits could be better to enhance your quality of life? Are you suffering with chronic pain or chronic illness and can't find the right solution that works for you? Fix Body Group was created so you have a team of professionals to help you achieve your health goals and get you back to doing what you love again. In Scottsdale, go to FixBodyGroup.com or call 480-795-5329. Fix Body Group, proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show and Fitness Minute with Tyler Mayer. 34 to nothing and only 17 seconds to do something about it for Arcadia in the first half. Here's the kick after a long ball touchdown from 18 out from Tapley to Tapley. And this could be a decent return out across the 30. And with this offense having been stymied aside from a couple long passes, See if they just choose to fall on the sword and head to halftime. Spencer Hughes remains the quarterback on this possession here with 10 seconds to go. Good eye, Jack, as Hughes hit that long ball on the last drive, but nothing after that. Only two or three first downs in the first half for Arcadia. So we'll just run the ball here. Plenty of green grass to work with, but it closes quickly. And we'll save that last time out and get to halftime. 34 to nothing as Desert Mountain has put on a clinic. Run, pass, defend. It started with a pick six on the first defensive snap of the game, and it hasn't gotten quite much better for Arcadia. Yeah, and now we'll see the number one band in the state of Arizona take the field for Arcadia here for our halftime show. We thank you so much for tuning in so far on our broadcast on the Varsity Sports Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, with that, Jack, we will send it to the halftime break. Half number two when we come back between Arcadia and Desert Mountain. It's 34 to nothing to the Wolves.
Brady Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetterathletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind.
Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating a platform to promote young people in extracurricular activities and community outreach. If you are interested in partnering up with the Varsity Sports Show, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or call or text us at 480-779-9437. The Varsity Sports Show. That ball is a fumble. You took it, you tucked it away, and you ran. Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you. Hey guys, Vince here to talk to you about a good friend of mine named Bob Jenkins. Bob is a Marine Corps veteran. Bob and his younger brother DJ own Vets Built Contracting. For five years, they've been hiring and putting veterans to work. Vets Built is licensed, bonded, and insured, both residential and commercial, specializing in renovations, remodeling, new build, casitas, safe rooms, or small commercial TI work. If you're a skilled veteran looking for work, a homeowner in need of work, or a commercial business needing TI work, please call Bob or DJ at Vets Built at 480-584-3675. Are you unable to do the things you love? Do you know your daily habits could be better to enhance your quality of life? Are you suffering with chronic pain or chronic illness and can't find the right solution that works for you? Fix Body Group was created so you have a team of professionals to help you achieve your health goals and get you back to doing what you love again. In Scottsdale, go to fixbodygroup.com or call 480-795-5329. Fix Body Group, proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show and Fitness Minute with Tyler Mayer. Your score, it's 34 to nothing as we rejoin you from the Valley of the Sun. It's a set sun as Desert Mountain leads Arcadia under the lights and on the road. It was as good a half of football as you could ever ask for. From the Wolves as we rejoin you, Peyton Gallagher, Jack Peterson, Pearson on the call. And it was by land, it was by air, it was by defensive fortitude from the Wolves and Arcadia. They're gonna have to dig deep and find something truly special if they're gonna make this a game in half number two. It was dominant every which way for Desert Mountain and what a statement coming off the big loss against Chaparral mm. last week, who's a very good football team, by the way. Arcadia, you gotta give credit though to these quarterbacks. They've stood in the pocket and taken hits all night and have still delivered some really good throws down the field. Let's see what this offense adjustments, let's see the adjustments that this offense makes as we get ready to start this third quarter of this football game here in Phoenix, Arizona. We just had a fantastic halftime show from Arcadia. How about the extracurriculars yeah. for Arcadia? Their cheer team, 2020 AIA small D2 state champions, the 2020 USA national runner-ups mm -hmm. as well, and then their band, as we talked about earlier, state champions. So extracurriculars here for Arcadia. A very big deal in the state as well. Absolutely, a lot of big high schools that definitely can compete with them. It's a total athletic department for Arcadia. Excellent facilities here at this high school, might I add. Brand new turf field put in about two years ago as they try to get this football program back on its feet on the heels of a one and seven season a year ago. All right, Looks like the, the man to do it is gonna be Ray Brown and by all accounts, despite what's transpired through the first 24 minutes of game action, he's well on his way to turning around the tide here right, for this Titan for football for program. Half, he has experience as an NFL coach will definitely show in the upcoming seasons yeah. and, and later on this season as well. I think we'll see this team improve drastically. No, it's pretty rare, Jack, to be able to grab a guy off an NFL sideline and bring him right to your high school program as 
Ray Brown was the offensive line coach. Wasn't even a special assistant or anything like that. Was the offensive line coach for the Arizona Cardinals as this is a gaping hole and a big return. First half was all Wolves. The second half will start the exact same as Zach Kilberg runs all the way back into the end zone. And it's a touchdown, six more for Desert Mountain. He takes it to the house on the first play of the game. So two times on the first play of the game. Well, this one's actually the special teams play. Last one was the first offensive play by Arcadia, but it turns into six points for Desert Mountain. A very similar start to the first half. And how about the speed there by Zach Kilberg, the running back who's had a pretty monstrous day so far. Picked his spot and went, went quickly. And with this extra point, it will be 41 to nothing. And he used all the field, went to the right, cut back to the left, mm -hmm. ended up on the opposite side of the field as he started on. Banquel drives it in. No one else was jinxed there. And we are a point away from a running clock in the second half. So any rousing team talk given in the locker room quickly extinguished that momentum that Arcadia may have had coming out onto the field for the second half. That was almost a dagger right there, Peyton. I mean, yeah. this team came out and just demoralized Arcadia. Arcadia, the offense hasn't been there. The defense hasn't been awful, but for them, you could point to a couple moments in that half like, hey guys, we made mistakes. We threw the pick six, we gave them a couple short fields, we can reverse fortune, but that really is backbreaking. Yeah, absolutely. I think this team has made a lot of mental mistakes. They're beating themselves, Desert Mountain is beating them as well, I would have to say. Defensive line, they're winning the, the line battle. Linebackers are firing for Desert Mountain. They're, they're making the, the right reads. It seems like they're playing with more passion right now, and why wouldn't they be? You know, you're, you're up 41-0. Obviously, Arcadia is going to be a little bit down on themselves. And we'll get ready here for another kickoff, 11.45 to go. Like you said, one point away from a running clock. Bank will, will send it long. He's not gotten the opportunity to kick off so far. Some pretty good leg into this one as it will be returned from the 10. Decent blocking and maybe right back at you as this is a good return out across the 40. Whew, that was close to uh, whatever you can do, I can do better right there. Well, good starting field position at least for this Titan offense as they will be led back out onto the field by the starter of tonight's game. That is Rocco Mortensen. He threw two picks, including a pick six on his first drop back of the evening. But the sophomore entrusted with the keys to the offense in half number two. Yes, yeah, so this is definitely a story that we're going to have to follow this year. Which Who's going to be their guy? Is it going to be Spencer Hughes or is it going to be Rocco Mortensen at the quarterback position? I think both of these guys are fighting for the starting job here just the third game into the season. That time it was a handoff and a big stuff at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. And we saw some offense conjured up with the vertical passing game on the last possession of the football for Arcadia. It could be effective if they can protect long enough to activate it. Yeah, correct. I mean, Rocco Mortensen and Spencer Hughes, they've made th great throws down the field when they've had time and also when the receivers have had time to get open. This time it's a quick out. And again, nothing doing. It's a pack of wolves at the football and a loss of one. Just absolutely blown up, and that's Jacob Gimble on the stop there. He's, he's there with with some other players there. He's had a monstrous game tonight. Two interceptions, one of them being a pick six, and he picks up another tackle there. This makes it a third and long. Well, they're going to spot the forward progress and give two yards there. So it will be third and nine. Timeout taken. The student section here at Arcadia is still full. Still some life here. They're hoping for a comeback. 41 nothing. 10-26 well, to go on the third. It may be full jack, but you couldn't tell. It is desolate here in the home stands. Absolutely silent. These, this crowd's stunned. Zero points, just 
No production from the offense. Mental mistakes, penalties tonight. But give credit to Desert Mountain, most definitely. I think it speaks to the game played by Desert Mountain because we came into this one talking about how this one was going to be a measuring stick for two evenly matched opponents. Orcania is a good, well-coached football team, and to do this to them on their own field says a lot more, I think, about Desert Mountain than it does Arcadia. It definitely, definitely does. And now it's like third and 10 here. As the defense for the Wolves getting ready to go back out there. Four receivers wide here. One running back in the backfield. Here's a long ball, and it's just broken up at the very last second. That's excellent coverage. Santana Wilson got a hand out there. The sophomore makes an awesome stop when you see him celebrate with his teammate there. That's number one, Bankwill. Just sticks his arm out, tips the ball, makes it uncatchable. But it was a really good throw. Absolutely. Great hang time. Really nice spiral, good accuracy, but just a better defensive play. That's really the best thing you can do if you're Arcania at this point is just make the defense go out there and execute. Last five times they have touched the football. Desert Mountain has scored a touchdown. They'll take it back from their own 35. And that punt took a Desert Mountain bounce towards the Arcadia end zone. And the student section on the other side, however, you said it's pretty much desolate for Arcadia, but on the other side, that small section of students has been rocking tonight. They're waving the American flag over there. I mean, have a couple signs as well. Where do you see a student section? I can't see a student section. I've been told it's a camo out. Yeah, it was supposed to be a camo. I don't see anyone wearing camo over there. We have a few people with some cowboy hats, however. But... A pretty good group of kids traveled over here to watch their team play an away game. There's an American flag out there being whipped around very aggressively. First and 10. And that will be stopped up for no game, maybe even a loss. All right, well, we have a tie to Titans on the stop. I see number 28, Devontae Merrill. Excellent PA work being done here tonight. A tide of Titans on the stop there. Fantastic PA work. It's Kevin Wigington again. He's had his nose in the fan all night long. Pistol set up here with three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Schnitzler comes in motion as they'll boot out. Throw it to him just out of his grasp. Maybe even got tipped on the way through as... Tapley was pursued by Ma'afu. Nice play call, had a man wide open with a blocker ahead of him. Kind of fooled some of the defensive front there. Quarterback rolled out, but as he's on the, that's a tough throw on the move, it really is, and just throws a little bit too far outside out of the reach of his receiver. Well, third and long and a chance for a stop for Arcadia. Just a shade under 10 minutes left to go in the third as Tapley is under pressure and he goes down. A glimmer of life for Arcadia as Cabot Wigington slung the quarterback down. So a three and out, that's the first one in a while here. They'll force this team to punt, the defense making a big stop and they had a couple stops earlier in the first quarter. We saw a back and forth battle of three and outs after the first pick six. I think the defense just really got weared out after being on the field so much, but a little bit rest at halftime and, oh, almost a blocked punt there. Takes a 4-2 at his hop and keeps on rolling inside the 40. And even when it's not going Desert Mountain's way, it goes their way as it's deadened at what appears to be just inside the 46 of Arcadia. All right, Jack, we've seen the passing routes outside the numbers create at least some excitement and some sparks of ambition in life for Arcadia. Is that what you keep going to? Why not? It's where you've had success tonight. Keep throwing down the field. Take some risks. 
Maybe a couple trick plays in there that you haven't brought out potentially. I think you use this this moment as a little bit of an opportunity where you can kind of play around with your offense as you really have nothing to lose being down 41 nothing. Quarterback is still Mortensen as he will look deep and run out of time. Another sack is that was a whole host of on rushing tacklers. One thing just notice Santana Wilson, the DB there on the outside for the Wolves does a great job and a lot of these DBs and I've done a great job of, of being such physical forces. I mean, you saw there does a great job of not allowing the receiver to get down the field and for that reason the pressure is able to get there. Quarterback's got no one to throw to and gets sacked. Second and 13. Mortensen was able to step up in the pocket and minimize the damage there. That tackle for loss. Lanks joins him in the backfield as he steps up, blasts one down the field and put too much on it looking for Smith. And now this defense sensing that the offense is going to be taking some shots down the field. Now you'll see these linebackers drop back into coverage instead of earlier where we saw them pretty much blitzing on every single play. You know what else it means, Jack? It means the pass rushers have their ears pinned back. We saw Sweet get in there for what might have been a half sack. We'll see how nice the scorebook keeper is. He's already got one, but by my tally, five and a half on the year. He's looking for six as he's going to get in there and create some pressure as Mortensen rolls right, trying to outrun Sweet. He'll get the edge, and he will pay for his trouble as picks up maybe four. Doesn't come particularly close to a first down, and here comes the punt squad. That's where he's looked his most comfortable, though, rolling outside the pocket, keeping his eyes down the field. Just, just absolutely looks way more comfortable on the run tonight rather than sitting in that pocket, just bracing to get hit. And on the sideline, I'm noticing some frustration, especially for these linemen here. Well, it's got to be tough having to go out there time and time again and not really come up with many answers. This is a high looping snap, but De La Cruz gets it away, and it is a very good punt that will take a hop. Now Freeberg grasps it, gets by one. And Freeberg will be wrangled up and taken down. After a decent little return there as Tanyan Kraft was eventually the man who came up and met him. So finally a stop there for Arcadia on the last drive. And right now just trying to prevent a running clock and play for some pride. And on that punt return, let's, let's go back to that play there. A nice catch off the bounce there. That, that's, that's a tough catch. It's an unpredictable football that could go anywhere. And you could easily muff that. He picks it up and actually makes a man miss for a positive return. So a very impressive play by the returner there for the for the Wolves. There's definitely a sense of confidence in the open field starting to be gained by a lot of the skill players, it appears. Which is fantastic for later on in the season. Here's Freeberg again. He gets a decent block downfield, gets to the sideline, and gets hit out of bounds. Decent game there, maybe six. All marked down on the 44 yard line. Out to the 44. Passing game starting to become more involved for Drew Tapley in the offensive staff of the Wolves. Schnitzler comes to the right side to run to that direction. Sheffrin bellows forward and lowers the shoulder. Another chunk on the ground into the enemy half of the field goes Desert Mountain. And once again, Sheffrin falling forward getting just that one extra yard every single time. And in a close game, that really, really matters, Peyton. Obviously tonight, not so much what they blow out so far right now, but in close games, those just one or two extra yards are just play such a crucial role. And you build those habits now. Football is for finishers. That's long been a saying. And right now, Desert Mountain just trying to see this one out. Ball on the ground, falling on top of it was Sheffrin as 
The Titans were all over that one. Nice job by Sheffrin to stay on top of that one and cover it up really, really quickly. It is going to go for a loss here. But I think we'll continue to see this offense try to milk the clock and run the ball up the middle. They've had a lot of success tonight. No need to throw when you have a big lead, 41 points exactly. This is second and 14 here with 5.22 to go. Little boot, looping throw, it's caught. And a nice couple moves to add on top of it as Freeberg gets another reception on the drive. The bootleg completely fooled the entire defense. They all shifted. He actually had two men wide open. He had his tight end hip as well. So just an absolute blown coverage there by this defense. The closest guy to Freeburg there was hip, not any defender. <laughs> yeah. Third and short. Full playbook is open here. Two yards to go. Hip comes to the left side. Direct snap. It's going to be McDonough who picks his spot, gets north and south, and gets the first down. Every time he's at the ball, it's been a positive play. It's almost a guaranteed four to five yards every time he touches the football. Whole playbook has been working for this Wolf offense. Either quarterback has been successful, despite very different skill sets from the two of them. We talked about defining identity here in the early weeks of a high school football season. It appears that this Desert Mountain team, that's starting to come into focus as that hole closes quickly for Sheffron. Nice stop by the big fella. Career, Beller in there, blowing that play up. And a nice little song choice here. A little outcast? A little throwback with Hey Ya. Jack, I know you've got some Georgia roots. A little shrug. First and 10, or rather second and 10 after the nullified run. Sheffern comes in motion this time. They'll swing it to him. Gets a decent block, maybe too good. Flag comes in as he pulls tacklers with him for what would have been a first down, but this is almost certainly coming back. Yeah, Schnitzier there. Just held on to him for a little bit too long. This one's most definitely coming back. And we'll see some personnel change as well. The call makes it official, so it will be second down, and they're gonna walk way on back. Second down, 21 to go. This quarter, even without the running clock, has just seemed to go by very quickly with the way that this offense is running. Running right, Sheffrin. Nothing doing third and long. Caden Carr, Carr that got in there for the stop and and is this is this four down territory here? Really believe you might have two cracks at this. Well, I think it really depends on how much you get here on third and a billion. 18 to go, but. I mean, the way Arcadia has struggled to stop this offense from doing whatever they want, uh, you bring up a decent question as a quarterback. It's going to be McDonough here. Straight keeper McDonough sprinting out to the right side is planted into the sideline. And a little bit more laundry. Thrown by the back judge. And that was definitely a good gain to pose the, the question. But let's see what this penalty is about. If they have to back up again, that definitely changes things. I think your point is built upon the fact that the ball kind of in no man's land right here. Punting is only probably going to gain you about 10 yards of field position if it's touchback. 
And this penalty will go against Desert Mountain. And your kicker probably doesn't have the leg to hit from 30 plus, so maybe they're gonna have to recover the yardage they just lost to make this a more interesting debate. As so they'll repeat third down and the offense will stay out there. Yeah, ball on the 41, it's the third and 20. I think you need about 10 yards to make this a discussion. Yeah. Two high safeties for Arcadia as they defend the 21. Sheffrin is met immediately. <laughs> Stuck and put down. Big hit. That was Cody Bowers on the tackle. Cody Bowers says hello. I saw Bowers there. He was going in for a blitz. No one picked him up. He was free. And he makes an enormous hit there. Sheffer never saw him coming. Yeah, just absolutely blindsided by him. And now the decision, I guess, is very easy to punt this ball away. I'd say so. As on fourth and 18, here is the punt. End over ends. Likely to take a good hop. That dies inside the 15. Good job there. That's not easy, but Bankwell. Now. My fault, my fault. The score has held at 41. The clock is stopped in a minute 45 as Mortensen sets up the screen. This is a good play design. And about the minimal outcome for Arcadia as Bankwell, the punter, comes up to make a stop on defense on what looked like could be a very big play as Ben Banks. Had blockers in front. Yeah, I think he just needed just one blocker on the right guy. Number 77, Phillips there, kind of chose to go to the inside guy instead of the guy that was right in front of him, and the gain was minimal because of that. Well, Jack, you've been calling for that all night, and that looked the best design play that we've seen from Arcadia this evening, trying to use the aggression of this defense against itself. Yeah, they finally had one of their playmakers in the open field there. Here's another screen, but it will be met with a very different result as that's going to be a loss. Another big hit delivered as Santana Wilson, who made a great defensive play, knocking a ball on a deep ball away earlier, flies in to make the stop behind the line. Yeah, he's looked really fantastic in this second, this second half so far. And all of these, these defensive backs and safeties have really done a great job of making tackles in the open field and blowing up all these screens. And we have a man down here for Arcadia. That's Brady Forrest who took that shot. While they tend to him, we will take a break. Hopefully back with good news when we return. So score is 41 to nothing to the visiting Desert Mountain Wolves here on the Varsity Show YouTube channel. Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetterathletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. So the good news is that under his own power, Brady Force was able to get to the sideline. The bad news for Arcadia is one of the better playmakers in this offense, unavailable for a third and one. Men cheating towards the line, pressure coming. Time to throw, and it is whirl down incomplete. Didn't quite set his feet, did Mortensen. Had his man open on the slant, though. Yeah, pretty good play call. They 
got the got got the blockers in the right position, and he had two men with this on a on a slant route across the middle, just missed the throw. And it looks like they're going to go for this mm. on fourth and one with 21 seconds to go in the third. What do you think this says to your team, Jack? Oh man. I, I mean, going for it here, I think it really means that this team. To me, it means that they've got the faith of their coach and they've got to prove it against an all-out blitz, and, and they pick it up. That's just awesome. I mean, just it shows trust, too, in your quarterback. You know, back backs against the wall, fourth and one here. And I think a coach that, that shows that he has trust in his quarterback just allows his quarterback to thrive so much more in the offense. Not scared to make a mistake there. Well, and you talk about resetting a culture. That's how you do it. Plays like that. As head man Ray Brown leads his offense out there and says, guys, show me you can get a yard. They do it. Fresh set of downs from just outside the 25-yard line of Arcadia as there are two guys in the backfield. We'll give it the primary running back here tonight. Ben Blank says that run is plugged up and back into the game goes Brady forced. We will see him back at the start of the fourth quarter. It's 41 to nothing. The defense shows some stiffness for Arcadia and limits the damage to only seven points in the frame. They're getting lit up in the second quarter. See how much they can play for pride in the final 12 when we come back. You're on the Varsity Show YouTube channel. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. experts. Schedule a free exam today and mention the Varsity Show for complimentary in-house whitening. From cleanings to more comprehensive dental, 24th Street Dental Biltmore in Phoenix is the first step toward a healthier smile. Located in the heart of the Biltmore, call or stop by 602-468-1135. Proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. 12 minutes left in it as we start the fourth quarter from Scottsdale with a second and 10 in Arcadia with the football as Mortensen looks for the long ball. He's got Smith. And it hops in complete as number 11 in red was streaking diagonally down the field. It was a decent throw, but just bracketed coverage there. Not much of a window, and it's third and long. We saw that exact play two times in the first half. One of them went for a big game. One of them was dropped. They go back to it again. Coverage was a lot different this time. There was two men all over him. You have to beg the question, have those short fields not been given with the interceptions and the long punt return? And had this Arcadia team been able to cover a kickoff, how different this game would be right now. But every mistake has been punished for Desert Mountain. Arcadia has just been a little outclassed. Here is third and 10. And it is picked off. Interception number three for the Wolves as Schnitzler burst into the attacking half of the field and gets tackled inside the 30. He timed that perfectly. I mean, jumped and at the peak of his jump was when the football was right there and he was able to go up and grab that and also had to be strong with his hands because the receiver did make a play on it, which was good on his part, almost knocking it out, but the strong hands there by Schnitzler and he gets a nice return, brings it down to about the 26 yard line you talk about opportunistic defense. That's eight interceptions in three games to go with three pick sixes wow. for the Wolves. They set the tone with one here in this one. And again, it is prime field position anytime, for Desert Mountain. Anytime your defense helps out your offense, it's just so crucial. And it's been a big part of today's game as a nice run there falls forward again for a few more yards. But like I was saying, when
when your defense can produce offense and produce offensive opportunities like they did just there, it just takes so much pressure off of the quarterback, the offensive coordinator, and it puts more pressure on Arcadia as well. There's a new running back there as Thomas Nurhelm took it around the left edge and lowered the boom. It's his a first carry of the game. Yep. Yeah. As he picked up six. A couple of backups starting to get some action with this one well in hand. The team in white. Timeout. Desert Mountain as they were struggling to get organized there on offense. We'll take it with them. Send it to a quick break here. As we are into the fourth quarter here in Arcadia. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating a platform to promote young people in extracurricular activities and community outreach. If you are interested in partnering up with the Varsity Sports Show, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or call or text us at 480-779-9437. The Varsity Sports Show. That ball is a fumble. You took it, you tucked it away, and you ran. Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you. Again, inside the red zone are the Wolves of Desert Mountain trying to make that clock run here in the fourth quarter, up 41-0, but hold everything, there's a flag. I haven't had as many penalties as we did in the first half. It was kind of a sloppy first half by both of these offenses and defenses in the penalty aspect. We've seen them kind of clean it up just just a few so far. Well, you wouldn't be able to tell the score based on how the Arcadia band is piping up. <laughs> They're the number one, number one band in the country for a reason. They gotta keep playing no matter what. <laughs> Second down from inside the 15 after the penalty, or rather after the timeout and the penalty. Here's a run to the left side. Falling forward is Nurhelm. Saw two men go in motion there. They loaded up that left side, handed the ball off. And a nice run, stays patient behind his blockers, picks up a few yards. Pistol look on second down. Nurhelm again, and he is slung down. On the carry. That time it's a small loss. As they will walk back about seven yards. No one really blocking a couple of those Titans there on the on that run there, and they easily blow it up for a loss. This will bring up a second, I'm sorry, a third down and 10. It was Cody Bowers who got in there who has been pretty active in the middle of that defense this evening. Third and 10 for Tapley. The Wool offense as he will roll out, face immediate pressure, and be thrown down. There is a penalty flag, but another Sparkling defensive play from Cabot Wigington, who got his second sack of the game. Everything stands as called. Looked like it may have been a hold. Yeah, that's that would be my guess here, and I think they they ought to decline that one and send the kicking unit out, which we haven't seen tonight. We haven't seen the kicker attempt a field goal tonight. But we'll see what the call call is here. It will be a fourth down. So Wigington gets in there for another sack, and this is a very long field goal try. Yeah, and I kind of like this. There's no pressure on this kicker right now. If he misses it, no big deal. But 
what a confidence booster it could be if he's able to nail this for later in the year. Carter Pruitt is back to return. It's a low line driver, and it falls well short of the crossbar. Why not, though? Why not? Just didn't look like he completely caught all that. Didn't Maybe didn't get under the ball enough. That ball didn't have enough height to get over the crossbar there. And a missed extra point continues to be the difference between this game having a running clock and not. We love high school football. We don't mind it. We love high school football. I'm excited to be here calling a game. Nothing better than this. No. For a sports journalist. Perfect weather in Arizona. Jack, you and I, a couple students at Arizona State, the Cronkite School. Very thankful for this opportunity to be with you this evening. Change at quarterback once more after the interception as it will be Spencer Hoos who will likely take us the rest of the way. You don't want to make any assumptions, but why change back as he quickly gets it out to Blanks, who puts his shoulder down and gets a couple extras. He's certainly not given any inches as we'll see where that's spotted. It was awfully close to a first down, but it'll be second and short. Yeah. Short passing game has been the most effective, really consistently at least, for the Titans of Arcadia. They've hit a couple long shots, but they've been few and far between. Who's on second and short? Looks quickly, and again, another drop there and a from Jeremy thrown. Smith. And a flag in there. That may be a late hit. Jeremy Smith definitely saw the linebacker out of the corner of his eye on that slant route towards the middle. It's got to be scary to come in across the middle and try to make a catch there and knowing you're about to get just absolutely leveled. We'll say to Smith's credit as we still wait on the call, it's given personal foul. Just as you predicted. Yeah, that'll be 15 more. To Smith's credit, although he's not been able to make some plays, he's been routing dudes up. He's been getting open. Absolutely. It's been kind of the one bright spot uh, on that receiver receiver crew. And the big fella, James Phillips, kind of limps off the field there. So we hope he's okay as he heads to the Arcadia bench. From the 50, here's who's Straight go route, and Smith never found it as he ran up the seam. I think it would have been overthrown, but you never know with the speed that Jeremy Smith has. I think a little bit of a miscommunication, or I don't know if he lost it in these bright lights. I'm always impressed on punt returns with these bright lights. Mm -hmm. You know, looking up, man, it's it's got to be hard to track that football from that high into your arms. Certainly not the most envious position in sports. Second and 10 from just inside the 50. Who's two step drop and a flare out. The offense starting to churn out some yards now for the Titans and you have to imagine in this position of the field if you don't take a loss you're even playing with two downs here. This is definitely their best drive of the night, I think by far. Finally, their offense kind of settling in. One area that I think I'd like to see improvement on in practice this week, just a few high snaps that just takes, you know, milli just milliseconds. Uh, but that's all that this, this defense needs to get pressure, you know. If you clean up these snaps, you, you allow your quarterback to have a lot more time to scan the field and find the open receiver. Third and short, pressure coming, he gets it to Blanks. It's gonna be awful close, but I think he has it, and there is a penalty flag that will put any doubt to rest there as Blanks grabs at his lower leg. Player down, player down. With this injury on the field, Blanks in a lot of pain. There's no reason for us to stay here. We'll send it to a break and come back with Hopefully, again, some good news on this injury when we return. 
Hey guys, Vince here to talk to you about a good friend of mine named Bob Jenkins. Bob is a Marine Corps veteran. Bob and his younger brother DJ own Vets Built Contracting. For five years, they've been hiring and putting veterans to work. Vets Built is licensed, bonded, and insured, both residential and commercial, specializing in renovations, remodeling, new build, casitas, safe rooms, or small commercial TI work. If you're a skilled veteran looking for work, a homeowner in need of work, or a commercial business needing TI work, please call Bob or DJ at Vets Built at 480-584-3675. Oh, oh wow. Okay. All right, we can talk about that. <laughs> sure. All right, ball's going to be up on the 25-yard line. I love this PA. First and 10 for the Titans on the Wolves' 25-yard line. At the end of this break, or at the end of this ad, I think we should be good. So, good news, Banks was able, or rather Blanks, was able to get back to his feet and more than that really was able to fire up some of his teammates after what looked a pretty gruesome hit in the moment. Face mask with his foot in the ground, got spun around, but here's Who's looking for the end zone. Tapped in the air and incomplete. In coverage again was Santana Wilson, who's had himself a ball game. Definitely, and I like the throw, though, and I like the play call to one of your, your taller wide receivers, and play now a penalty after the play. But like I was saying, I like that throw over the top to one of your taller receivers. Let him have a chance to go get that one. He almost pulls it in. This has been the best drive of the night for this team in red, but it's been aided by penalties, a couple personal fouls, and it looked like there might be one more here as Wilson was doing a little bit too much talking after making a very nice play. Flag is still out as the officials converse over this one. And the ball will be picked up and marched forward. As unsportsmanlike conduct. So on this drive, 45 yards and penalties given up. And you have to wonder what practice will look like for this defense. Yeah, as much as this defense has has played well this week, especially coming off a week where they let up 407 total yards against Chaparral. They played well today, but this drive is definitely going to be a yeah. focus for the critiques in the film room this week. Who's quickly fires out in and out of the hands there as Force was trying to feel out the hole in the defense, couldn't hang on, and Jack, nothing drives a coach crazier than sloppy penalties at the end of a game that you've got in hand. Yeah, exactly. Coaches cannot be happy with that because those are just habits right there. You know, you make a nice play. Why don't you just run back, get in your position again? Doesn't matter that you have 41-0. No need to trash talk because in close games, those penalties are going to come back to haunt you. We got a man in motion and trips to the left here. Quarterback looks the opposite way. Got a man wide open to the pylon. He steps in, touchdown. Arcadia gets one on the board as it's Thomas Guerrero who marches in, runs over a defender in the process. 41 to six now as Arcadia took them a while, but they finally get their first points of the game. Yeah, and it's got to be relieving. Finally, that offense gets some points on the board. It was a nice play call. They had trips to the left after a man goes in motion. They throw to the opposite side. And Guerrero, who's listed on our charts here as a defensive only player, catches that out of the backfield, keeps his head down, keeps the legs driving, and gets into the end zone. And you finally hear the band play their touchdown fight song here, They're gonna which go just for sounds two. fantastic. Not seen Thomas Guerrero really all night long, but he may have just made the best offensive play of the night for Arcadia. He'll stay in here. Rolling right. Who's is in trouble, and he goes down. And it's Max Sheffrin who closes the door there. Points nonetheless, though, and that pretty much sees to it that the running clock will not happen in this game. Sheffrin almost got pump faked, but luckily was able to land on top of the quarterback. Quarterback did a good job of using the pump fake. If he only just got away from him for a second, could have got to extend that play. 
So are you going on side here? Because clearly this Arcadia team has played like this game is still 0-0 here in the second half. I mean, the score in this half is 6-7 in favor of Desert Mountain. You take away a bad first half for a team that had not had a team score a point on them in the first half of play coming into this game. We're talking about a completely different contest, but it's just been too many state mistakes for Arcadia. Arcadia's done a great job defensively in this in this second half. And the reason why, I think, is they haven't been on the field as much. They've been in better positions. And here's the kickoff. The crowd finally kind of awakened here. So it's a deflection there. And just falling to his knees. Interesting. Interesting scheme on the kick there. Kind of a squib. I figured it'd be either onside or just a boot. James Phillips will stay on the bench here as he's being tended to. It's going to be a first and 10 for the Wolves on their own 37-yard line. And we continue to see Rocco Mortensen. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. We see Drew Tapley out there. I'm surprised they're going to continue to play their starting quarterback with such a large cushion. And the rest of the backup brigade already in the contest. Big hole on the near side as this is a solid piece of running. Nurhelm takes it around the left side. And they've been pounding that side of the line on the past few drives. Yeah, big number 66, James Cobb has done a really nice job opening up some holes, especially allowing his running backs to get to the outside. The left tackle there has done a fantastic job all night. I beg your pardon, Thomas Nurheim, not Helm. I looked an awful lot like an L on our boards, but <laughs> worthy of having his name said correctly as he gets the carry here and is dragged down by his face mask, so that will be 15 more. Jack, we got to finish too. That's a flag on the play for us. Mainly me. Yeah, yeah. Those face masks can get a little scary too. We saw an yeah. injury happen. Grabbing the face mask, definitely one of the most dangerous things in football is, you know, your neck twists around your body. You have momentum going one way and the defender's pulling it back the other way. So glad to see that both of those face masks have not resulted in serious injury tonight. So, Taking those 15 yards is Desert Mountain as they look to answer the touchdown scored by Arcadia moments ago. Nurheim stays in the game at running back in the pistol. Tapley on the give, Nurheim tries to get right now, cuts back left, trying to escape. He will not. Got back to the line of scrimmage. And right now, this band playing Sweet Caroline here. Love to see it. One of my favorites on a game day. Behind Popstar. Oh, of course, come on, DJ Khaled, Drake, Popstar, fantastic. One might even call it sensational. <laughs> and if you get that reference, I appreciate <laughs> Second and 11. About two thirds of this fourth quarter transpired. Nurheim again, and again looks to bounce. This time though, Arcadia sniffs it out as they rally to the football and make the stop. Caden Carr and Maafu were in there. And we didn't we didn't hear, haven't called uh, Caden Carr's name too much today. But he's one of their one of Arcadia's best players. They've got some very good linebackers here. The side in red. Yeah, last week Caden Carr totaled 11 total tackles, six individually. Sheffrin 
Sheffrin with a stiff form, ran into his own man. Throws the football down against the ground in frustration. Had he been able to avoid that collision, may have been able to head towards the end zone, but does pick up the first down. He has blocker. Just couldn't get out of the way, couldn't squeeze by him. That definitely could have been six, though. Sheffrin getting a little bit more burn out here. As it's a couple very talented backs in the backfield for Desert Mountain. Zach Kilberg's day is done, but you'd have to say he's probably the player of the game, especially because of that kick return to open up this second half and erase any doubt. Yeah, the kick return was, was absolutely the dagger of this football game. He's been dominant all, all season as well. Over 200 yards rushing this season now. Here's Sheffrin. And Sheffrin meets a wall as Kerry Beeler was the first man in. And I like the ability for this football team to have two different kind of backs in the backfield. Can use them at different times, Absolutely. use them in different situations. Just allows your offense to expand so much more. Especially when you've got two quarterbacks that can throw a bunch of different looks in there as well. We saw a lot of McDonough in the middle of this game, but it's been Drew Tapley's show down the stretch. Running back, back Mc into the game. McDonough. McDonough kind of reminds me of that Taysom Hill kind of a player on the New Orleans Saints, where you know they kind of use him in situations, and he's a really good runner, a pretty good decision maker. That's kind of the the comparison that I have for him. It's not a bad one, Jack. Not at all. Very much so a luxury for an offense. And, and with the double quarterback strategy, they definitely have to have defined roles to maintain confidence. We've seen it work brilliantly on one side. We've seen it work not so well on the other. Yeah, most definitely. We've seen two quarterbacks maybe fighting for a starting job, which is a different situation, however. But yeah, tonight, really none of them having too much of an impressive showing. They've had some good throws down the field. And once again, give them credit for staying in the pocket all night. They've been just absolutely slaughtered in there. Talk Nurheim. about slaughtering. What a play yeah. there. Jeez, Nurheim had no chance there as the ball was bobbled on the snap. And he is slung down. Nice tackle, and it will be fourth down and long. And will they send that field goal unit out again for a similar distance that came up short last time? It looks like they're actually going to keep the offense, though, on the field this time. This is a pretty long fourth down. You got 10 yards to go. I think they may be well, waiting on a delay of game here to make it easier to punt the ball and cough and corner. We'll see. Under 30 to go. Yeah, play clock running down. And yeah, like you said, under 30 to go. Play clock hits zero. There's the flag. And I think, yeah, they will send the punt unit on now. Or we'll see. We'll see. As Bankwell can both kick and punt. But yeah, looks like he's lining up to catch the ball and then kick it. So he will try and prevent the ball from rolling into the end zone here. A really good punt again that takes a bad hop. And is touched down at the 18-yard line for what will be probably the final snap of this football game. Yeah, and as we approach the final snap of the football game, as you said, for these teams upcoming next week, Desert Mountain will be on the road against Peoria. And, yeah, it will be a fantastic one. And then Buckeye will be visiting or will be hosting this Arcadia team. New quarterback in, rather that is who's that stays in for Arcadia to take this final snap. And it looks like it's just gonna be a kneel down. It is a resounding victory for Desert Mountain who got their work done in the first half. And, that is going to 
And that will do it. So Final we, score, 41 to six as the clock hits triple zeros, Jack. So as we said, this was a benchmark game for these two teams. And let me tell you what, Desert Mountain just might have had a signature win of the year, 41 to six in dominating fashion. Defense looked really, really good after a poor performance last week. Two quarterbacks that look like they can really work together in the offense. They're gonna play a tough matchup next week. As of right now, Buckeye is 2-0. Don't know what the score is over there on their Friday night game, but that will be a fun one to watch next week. Don't know what else there might be to add to this one. So with that, your final score is 41 to six. You can join us on Friday, September 24th for our next Friday night football game of the week live stream. Be at Campo Verde High School as the Coyotes will take on Williams Field Blackhawks in that one, kickoff is at seven o'clock, but will be live at 6.45, your pregame coverage. Our camera operators, Declan Kelly and Finn Kelly, producer Madison Thomas, right, remember, technical director, Bailey Leisure. Sure I'm Peyton Gallagher saying good night. The the varsity we'll Sports Show from the stadium here at Arcadia. Good night, everybody, take care. Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetterathletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating a platform to promote young people in extracurricular activities and community outreach. If you are interested in partnering up with the Varsity Sports Show, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or call or text us at 480-779-9437. The Varsity Sports Show. That ball is a fumble. You took it, you tucked it away, and you ran. Arizona's home for youth, high school, college,